Welcome to Marketing Monday, where we go over all of the news this week in marketing and business with the section called Wins and Fails. And unfortunately, although I love to always start out with a positive win, today we must start out with a fail because on last week's episode of Wins and Fails, I talked about a technological breakthrough I thought would change the world. Mark Zuckerberg's legs. He added digital legs to the metaverse and I called it one of the greatest wins of all time. The fail today, ladies and gentlemen, is that those legs were a lie. They were faked. Facebook's legs video was a lie. In fact, despite spending $10 billion a year and pivoting his entire multi-billion dollar company into the metaverse, he actually doesn't yet have the technology to make legs in the game. Uh, it turns out these were all done with motion capture and added in digitally later. Mark Zuckerberg, you lied! And this is not a very good time for more or any bad metaverse news. Company documents show that Mark Zuckerberg's, Zuckerberg's meta pivot is falling short. An empty world is a sad world. Unlike the 3.5 billion average monthly users that are part of Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp. And the reason he can do this, ladies and gentlemen, is because Mark Zuckerberg has what's called dual class shares in his company, where his shares have 20 times the voting rights. And so uh, <laughs> Mark Zuckerberg, if he thinks metaverse is the way to go, nobody can really stop him. And internal documents are showing that people are very, very, very unhappy with this direction internally at the company. For me, though, this is currently a fail. And in an environment like this, fails breed additional fails. And Mark Zuckerberg is starting a farm <laughs> because he is following up in his flailing state, angry at the world, angry at his own company, and especially angry, most of all, at Apple, the company that is basically doing everything he wants to be doing, but better and taking all of his money. Apple has, uh, I mean, uh, Zuckerberg has green light this new ad campaign for WhatsApp, which is like kind of the last Facebook um, property that is doing decently well as Instagram begins to sag and Facebook collapses. Uh, this new ad campaign is targeted around how WhatsApp is way more private than Apple ever was. Green bubble, blue bubble, nah, more like private bubble. Takes aim at Apple's iMessage. They said Facebook owned app is actually far more private and secure than Apple's. Now, whether this is true or not, it doesn't really matter because Mark Zuckerberg and Facebook are bad at marketing. <laughs> They're just not good at it. And so nobody believes them. Even though Apple is also a money hungry business that sort of fakes privacy so they could build their own ad agency or ad camp, you know, ad tracking network. People believe them because they're good at it. <laughs> they're very, very good at it. And Zuckerberg is not. And so this doesn't ring true at all and feels like, again, more wasted money on the part of Meta at a time when they kind of need to be cutting costs. So things are bad over at Meta, but there is some good news coming from social media. And that is a win for you guys, the Zoomers. Because while us millennials tried our damnedest to get hooked into the online ecosystem, and really focus our attention spans down to the most elite levels of time, three seconds. The world has moved on and left our skills in the dust because new research is showing that while we used to say you only have three seconds to take attention in social media video, Facebook's new research is saying is now down to 1.7 seconds. <laughs> the average user watches a video for 1.7 seconds before losing attention and moving on. If you do not have a hook in the first 1.7 seconds, you now have to move on. And I don't know if this is related, but I'm gonna call this a win and I'm gonna call the reason why it could maybe be a fail. <laughs> the FDA has just confirmed we have a nationwide shortage of Adderall. <laughs> no! No! Price is skyrocketing for the ever important Adderall. A disaster to be sure. Two terrible fails today. No legs, no Adderall. What kind of future are we leaving for our kids? Let me give actually one sincere rant win to Telegram, a messaging app, which found a pretty creative way to help growth hack some new users is they added the name of their app and their logo underneath the notch so the user doesn't see it but when they take a screenshot and share it it all has the branding on it but that was like a clever way to utilize the new uh <laughs> apple setup and uh, also get your branding out there without being uh overly noticeable when you're it's kind of clever it was like a one little small thing but i thought eh, kind of clever while we're on social media i did want to say that again that's a win but i have to balance it out as always with a fail and this one this one cuts me deep 
This one, this one really hurts me. I know that I say that sometimes and I'm joking. I'm, I'm serious now. I am, I am a big proponent of influencer marketing. Again, I myself am sometimes an influencer marketer. And when you can't trust the people who are doing these paid messages, it's, it's disheartening. It's disenchanting. You know what I said? It takes away from the, the soul, the real relationship between the audience and the, and the community. And so when I found out that someone I really respected, Marie Altman or Marin Altman, a popular Bitcoin astrologer, <laughs> it turns out that some of her astrology readings were actually secretly paid for by crypto company Celsius. And that, how could you do that, Marin? She was a successful Bitcoin astrologer. I found one of her videos to give you an idea of what it's, what it's kind of like. Why it looks atrocious. Mercury opposite Bitcoin's Pluto on the 5th looks really challenging. Mercury opposite Bitcoin's Mars on the 7th looks mm -hmm. challenging. Mm -hmm. Mars square Bitcoin's Mercury on the 9th looks, yeah. I trusted you, Marin! You said the full moon of Jupiter and I dumped into Celsius! And it turns out a lot of this stuff was paid for by some of these crypto companies. The fail is on her for lying, but the win is on them for spending their money so wisely. <laughs> What influencer marketing. So really, this is a, a true disaster and my trust is finally shaken in Bitcoin. But while we're on the subject of, of influencer ad reads, I, you know, I had a similar thought here. I myself have been absolutely uh, crushed by this uh, bad investments that I've made on behalf of her. So I would like to suggest right now, if you have a chance to make your own bad investments on behalf of me on public.com. <laughs> Or don't, or actually don't. You can invest fractionally where you just wanna test things out and see how they go. You can also follow my trades. So if you wanna see me make absolutely foolish trades like ape into Disney over and over week after week, you can do that. You can see my trades on public.com. I use it every day to check my stocks. Uh, it's a clean, easy to use app and you can follow many people, including not just myself, but people like uh, Cody Co, Scott Galloway, tons of interesting people. So. Check them out. Thanks to Get Public. They've been a longtime supporter of this stream. And in fact, uh, over 1,000 people from this stream have signed up for Public and gotten a free share of stock, which you do get if you sign up with my code in HR, public.com slash HR. Uh, and I have taken the free shares of stock that I got from you guys signing up and put them all into Disney. <laughs> so thanks again to Public. That being said, that was a fine ad read, sure. But is it the best ad read? Because ladies and gentlemen, I have a win for you. And that is from Tyler1, who was paid to play Overwatch 2 and delivered a far superior ad read than I could ever hope to. Required talking points to be said in your own voice. Do not read word for word. <laughs> These need to feel authentic and organic. <laughs> Overwatch 2 is now free to play, guys. I know Overwatch 1 was like, you had gotta buy it. Which it was a nice, reasonable, comfortable price, but Overwatch 2 is now free to play. It's crazy. So I could never top that. What a phenomenal ad read from Tyler1. Truly the forefront. And I, you know what? I felt a real authenticity in his voice in the way that I never could from Marin, the Bitcoin astrologer. So big win to Tyler1. Continuing, continuing, continuing. I want to talk about one of my main stories for the day. Main stories. This is what we call a M -m -m major win. Okay, this is where the gets, shit gets real. The gloves are off. This is a win for us, as people like to watch interesting legal corporate battles. Microsoft and Sony are <laughs> duking it out. The fight is real, and it's all happening legally and behind the scenes. Here's what's happening. I know that you'd never expect this, but the UK is actually important. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> Wait. It, it, the UK matters in the world? People care about what like they say in the UK government? Apparently, this merger between Microsoft and Activision Blizzard, two American companies, needs UK approval? Ugh, they have to go and like talk to what, the queen or something? She's dead. So yes, mergers between two global companies require approvals from all the countries they'll be operating in to uh, make it through. Now, normally, most of them would be rubber stamped, after the home country uh, approves it, but the UK government is putting up quite a fight. The UK government is basically saying, hey, we've looked into this. They put out a 72 page report that I skimmed. It was, uh, <laughs> it was, it was dense. They're saying, uh, we looked into this and if you buy Activision Blizzard, it's gonna be awful for Sony, awful for competition, awful for cloud gaming, and basically end up with you guys having a total monopoly over most of the video game industry. You know, whether or not that's 100% true, there's some merit to it. And and they're threatening to block the deal. And so now the battle between Microsoft and Sony is taking place primarily in the UK's Competition and Market Authority courtroom. And uh, yeah, the $68.7 billion deal to buy Activision Blizzard, 
Here's their full report, by the way. Uh, extremely dense. But uh, all of this, uh, you know, cloud gaming, basically a lot of things are saying that the merger is going to be pretty bad for everyone else other than Microsoft. And Microsoft has already been low key walking it back now but Loki was saying hey uh call of duty <laughs> you know we're we're spending a lot of money on this we're gonna be keeping that <laughs> that's not gonna be a sony game after like one or two generations and i think that's one of the biggest uh factors to this to this argument call of duty is by far the most the biggest selling game uh in the world and especially in the uk every year for the past 10 years so making call of duty exclusive to microsoft's game pass and not on Sony consoles is going to have a materially adverse effect on the competition of the industry. And so that is sort of becoming the sticking point. And it's perhaps possible that to appease the regulators in the UK, Microsoft will need to give a, a formal agreement to not make Call of Duty exclusive. But right now, they are currently going gloves off and basically saying, Sony, nah, -uh, Sony, you're a liar. They're saying this incorrectly relies on self-serving statements by Sony who significantly exaggerate the importance of Call of Duty. Microsoft is taking the tactic of saying Call of Duty sucks. <laughs> Nobody cares. It's not a big deal. Microsoft's strategy so far has been like, nah, dude. We're actually buying Blizzard, but Blizzard's ass. <laughs> Which, you know, not, not, not too far off. They've also said the following. They said, PlayStation has been the largest console platform for the last 20 years. Sony's uses market power to do actions like raise prices without fear of losing market share. The, the idea of COD exclusivity ending PlayStation is not credible. That's what they say. Uh, and Sony continue to buy their own studios. Although that being said, this is a little bit disingenuous because Microsoft spent $67.8 billion to buy one of the biggest and most powerful studios in the world. And Sony spent like $500 million to buy like, <laughs> you know, a small studio. It's not the same thing. They're not, <laughs> Microsoft is saying, hey, we're both doing it. But it's not, it's not the same thing. It's going to be a real fight is what I'm trying to say. This is going to be a real, real fight. And it's just funny that it happened in the UK. Not to stress this enough. If this deal is blocked or for whatever reason doesn't go through and interest concerns, I'm not losing any sleep. I personally think big mergers like this are always, even if they don't work out to be monopolistic, they're just bad. It's always better to let companies fail on their own than just get swallowed up to bigger, bigger and pies. I'm fine with it. But Activision Blizzard, if they don't have this buyer of last resort, Microsoft, no one else is really in the market at the price they were talking about. And they're pretty fucked. Activision Blizzard is in like a real tough time right now. Overwatch 2 is not really hitting. I mean, they have a couple big things, but overall the company's in a, a morale downturn, stock price downturn. If this deal doesn't go through, it's going to be really bad for Activision Blizzard. So uh, this was sort of their big escape parachute. While we are on the subject of the UK, I just wanted to give a shout out. Listen, I know I've talked a lot of shit about the new uh, prime minister of the UK, Liz Truss, who has come in to a company racked by debt, massive amounts of the government's budget going towards interest payments on that debt, and then deciding, hey, let's take out a bunch more debt. <laughs> that was sort of her first action uh, as prime minister was to take on a ton more debt, basically to cut taxes for the rich. <laughs> That was her first, oh, did I say company? Country, sorry, country. Treating it like a company. She, yeah, her first action was to do a massive, massive multi-billion dollar tax cut for the rich on a country that clearly could not afford it. And that caused the, the uh, valuation of the pound to basically get cut in half. But I didn't know she had that devil in her. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I didn't know she had that dog in her, dude. I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> she got down like that. Okay? So never mind. Liz Trust, you're all right. I don't know if she bad bad. So far, every leadership in Britain has been voted out or knocked out of power pretty quickly. They've had a real revolving door of leadership because of the crisis the country is in. And right now, bookies are basically having a bet. This is the big win on whether or not she will outlast a head of lettuce. There is a live stream going on on whether Liz Trust is uh prime ministership will outlast the lifespan of this head of lettuce <laughs> and bookies are having real bets on it. <laughs> Enough about Britain though. I just want to, I want to give a little bit on Britain. I want to talk a little bit about, um, again, my favorite topic apparently lately inflation couple things to say about inflation number one there is some decent news four ways that inflation is not so bad there are strategies you can take number one you can delay major purchases like a home or a car you can reduce your holiday spending and you can stay in a job you don't enjoy <laughs> this was cnbc's guide to preparing for recession and inflation just have more money don't buy things and then be in a job you don't like so there already 
big win, right? These are easy guides. Second thing, rent for the first time in like uh, a very long while. I don't know how many quarters it's been. Median actual rent has actually declined. Now again, you can't even see it. Wait, <laughs> my, my camera's blocking it. <laughs> you can't even see it, it's so small. But it has dipped. It is possible that incredibly uh, rising rents have finally peaked and may finally be subsiding, especially as we enter in to a pretty tough economic environment. And rent is a very core part of inflation. So if we have a handle on rent rising, this may be an actual sign that inflation has begun to subside. Uh, speaking of which, almost everything else has gone up. But Joey P here, a guy I follow on Twitter, has found all the things that have gone down. Smartphones are cheaper than they were. Televisions are cheaper than they were. Sporting events are cheaper. Video equipment, ship fare. Basically, <laughs> He has said, the lesson here is the best activity in a post-inflation environment is taking the ship to a baseball game, recording it on your smartphone, and eating a steak with ketchup at the ballpark. <laughs> so I found the perfect date night. Write this down. Okay, this is the perfect weekend activity. Uh, finally, last way to save money on inflation is to watch ads on Netflix because it's finally happening and quicker than we thought. By November 3rd, we're only like two weeks away, uh, the Basic with Ads tier will launch at $7.99 or $6.99 in 12 countries, including the US, Australia, Germany, and the UK. Netflix with Ads is finally here. And yes, it will be $7 with ads to watch Netflix in the Basic tier. So you can save money on Netflix if you consider it a um, uncancelable bill by watching with ads. Now, uh, let me do something that I almost never do on Marketing Monday. Watch some marketing. I wanna do a segment where I do win and fail ads of the week. I'm gonna show you one win ad and one fail ad uh, that I liked and didn't like. Let's watch the fail ad. I clipped this ad while I was watching Worlds and I thought, wow, this is a pretty bad ad. <laughs> yeah, that's the most I can give you. Fine, then it's time for the ace up my sleeve. My beloved squishy pig with with original holographic cover art. Hey, Ash, what you selling? Save the references, Jake, from State Farm. I'm saying goodbye. This little piggy went to the game store. You don't have to sell your favorite games. State Farm has coverage options, so you get a rate that fits your budget. Thanks, Jake. Hands off the squish. Cringe! The chat just spams NA ads. <laughs> NA ads, Keck W, NA ads, Keck W, over and over. Uh, yeah, not a terrible ad, I guess, but I just found it to be pretty, uh, pretty wasteful. You know, they've done pretty good stuff before with Riot. They've done some cutting edge stuff. And, uh, I found this to be, uh, pretty trademark, like, um, gamers. Hey, gamers, you like this? Here's a gamer related thing that you guys can all relate to. And I found it to be pretty lame. Ashley Birch is great, but she couldn't save that I thought was a pretty, uh, contrived ad. So that was the bad ad. That being said, I have to balance it out with a win which I think is a very good ad. Uh, this ad comes from France, if you can believe it. KF Cinema from France. Yeah, they were playing that in the opening of movie theaters. I thought it was great. They were using uh, iconic movie scenes with the KFC Crunch. Cool ad, but this is just a lot. God, I hate listening. <laughs> Who's What's misophonia? As in you so phony, you don't want to hear people eat? That's crazy. I, I thought it was a great ad. Anyway, I watched it because it is a gold Clio winner, uh, and it was the first one that I liked. I usually watch all the Clio winners, and I didn't enjoy most of them, and that one really stood out. Uh, did it perform well? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I it just happened, so we can't really tell, but they won a lot of awards.